and it is not displaying anything. Okay. So in I'm going to hit my start my my stopwatch in three, two, one. Good morning, Sheila. How are you doing this morning? Good morning, Wayne. I'm doing very good. How about yourself? I am doing well, thank you. Oh, the sun is shining. The birds and the bees are buzzing and singing. The the leaves are wafting with the with the breeze. Such a pretty morning this morning. It is a pretty morning. <laughs> it is. I have to agree. And welcome, everyone, to 27 Minutes with Sheila and Wayne, where we talk about skills and verbs that we are, as we are attempting to change the world one verb at a time. <laughs> and Sheila, what verb are we speaking about today? Today's verb is to replace, and two definitions I have are to take the part of or to put something back in a previous place or position. So how about yourself? And I also have to change something that is old, damaged, lost, or etc. Mm -hmm. for something new or better. Okay. I also, I also have to take the place of something or to put something or someone in the place of something or someone else. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of somethings and some ones in there. A lot of somethings there, right. <laughs> yes. And, and you know what? The, one of the definitions that you just offered, I'm going to speak to a little bit later, I never realized that that's what replace was as well. And that might sound confusing, but I'll, I'll explain it to you a little okay. bit later. Anyway. Okay. And Sheila, ooh, uh, the question, okay, is Trivia it under question. construction? Is it under construction? Oh, that question. <laughs> under construction. <laughs> so where can they find you then as opposed to email you? Zekeandsheila.com. And to our listeners, you can find me at www.mindsinking.com. Email me at Wayne at mindsinking.com. And you can, if you want to email Sheila, you can email it to me and I can get it to her. That's right. <laughs> thank <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> so, so all the compliments, all the words, all the feedback. And thank you for those of you who have been sending feedback. We really yes, appreciate it. Yes, thank you. It does you. help. We do. It we does. Do. Yes, it does. Yes. And, and I take feedback also as criticism. So if you have some criticisms, right. you know, some ways that we can make this better, yes. um, let us know that too. Please. All right. Go ahead, wow, Sheila. I, I've got I this trivia question. Just I've been trying to just hold hold in. Okay. Okay. Not that it's that interesting of a question, but generally, when you replace a worker, what percent of the worker's salary does it cost you? Ooh. Okay. Okay. So we'll answer that at the end of the show. Yes. Now I think I know some of that, but I'll wait till the end of the show. Okay. But I think it's more of a staggering number than one would think. Well, I'll I'll just okay, say that. Okay, good, good. All I'll right, just, I'll we just will say see. That. And I have a trivia question, and oh, it's, okay. you know this this could be of many things, but I'm thinking about one thing. So there's probably a lot of correct answers for this. Okay. But what has replaced some of the many common items that we all once used on a daily basis? Okay, so I have what, my guess. That so I, I'll okay. guess at the end of the show. All right, at the end of the show, and I'm sure your guess is correct. <laughs> okay. So there we go. What did your research find, or where did it take you? Which path did you, you know, see? You know, it took me a lot I'll, down several paths, which if we have time, I'll touch on. Like, how often do you want to change certain household items? You know, how often do you want to change those out? But what, what I got really excited about was uh, chatbots especially chat uh -huh. GPT, because uh -huh. I've been hearing that in a lot of headlines. People are talking about it. And I realized I have no clue what it is or why it's people are so excited about it. So I did some research and I have a better understanding now of the pros and cons. Do so, tell. Well, OK, first of all, I had to go back to not just chat GPT, but what is a chat bot? I had to look that up. <laughs> so, uh, and then artificial intelligence in general. So I'm flipping through my pages here to try to find where I defined a chat bot. Chat bot. You probably can jump in there and tell me what that is. I uh, have no clue well, what it's, chat bot is. Okay. So here I've we go. I've a chat bot. 
It's a computer program designed to simulate conversation with human users, especially over the internet. So that's Chatbot, but ChatGPT is a whole nother level, and that is Chat Replace. Or ch let me see that. Chat. <laughs> I wrote it down, but I got so excited about it. I've got it on too many pages. <laughs> Chat Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. And this is wow. reinforcement learning from human feedback. Ah. So the responses adapt to new information reflecting human uh, dialogue. And so uh, one of the pros of using chatbots, well, first of all, I want to go back in time in terms of concerns about artificial intelligence. And in 2013, the question was, an Oxford study said that 40% of jobs could be eliminated in 20 years by using artificial intelligence. Hmm. So then in 2017, a McKinsey study said, well, actually portions of most jobs, but not all jobs. The most uh, repeatable actions in physical jobs can be done with artificial intelligence like welding or jobs requiring multiple calculations like optimizing truck routes. Uh -huh. but, but any people management or healthcare or education, not so much. So in 2023, they said, what won't chatbot replace? And the list got a lot smaller. Ooh. Um, and mostly um, it's used a lot on online retailer applications. And have you ever called, say, a credit card company or bank and they say, first, can you tell me what your interest is? Is it a new credit card? Is it lost saving? You know, yes. I mean, and, and you select one. Those are chat bots. Ah. But they're saying that chat GPT especially will be really great for lead generation and reservations for hospitality and food service industries, and even up to 70% of administrative tasks in healthcare. So huh. what, and one year they're saying, no, no way. And now they're saying, well, yeah, big way, but here's some pros and cons. And then I'll let you talk about what you were talking about, but this is just so exciting to me. Oh, it is. It sounds exciting. And, and it also sounds replacing much like the conveyor belt or the assembly yes. line. Yes. 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 Right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. Exactly right. Which which transformed and created, you know, the Industrial Revolution, some of those Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Yes. So according to Futurity.org, see now one thing that chat GPT doesn't do is cite sources. And sometimes uh -huh. it makes up information. That's why I'm citing my source here. Okay. Specifically, Jeff Hancock at Stanford University said that uh, the best accuracy you can uh, estimate for chat GPT answers is uh, 50 to 70 percent. The rest of them sound really good, but they're not true. They call it hallucinating or making up information <laughs> or combining information just because it sounds good. And especially when they use a lot of big words and people are lost. But the, the pros obviously are that it can streamline a lot of facilities. It can, it sounds friendly. So it has a lot of user acceptance in certain areas, but the cons, and this is the part that the headlines emphasize that the scary parts are, uh, it has plagiar, it plagiarizes. It's got mm. a bias based on the data that it draws from. It has a lack Ooh. of information about pre 2021 content uh, because most of the research has been done since then, most of the human dialogue and and feedback. Uh, it doesn't understand what it's saying. So answers can be way off base, but sound good, which is what I just said a minute ago. Yes. And um, and it's a huge problem coming for disinformation and large scale persuasion and uh, and 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 putting out information and persuading people that is absolutely false. And we've seen that people can be easily persuaded in those ways <laughs> over time. So anyway, those were some of the of the of the exciting paths I went down on chatbots. So what what excited what got you excited about researching the word replace? Well, I it, it, it's funny you asked that question because now I don't know why, but my first thought of this verb replace was towards the negative. Oh, okay. And, and again, I don't know why. I, I have no idea why I thought that way. Huh. So as as I thought more about it, I became more 
focused on what the definitions above seemed to be yes. telling me. Okay. That this verb replace could most definitely be very positive or at least neutral in nature. And and again, I, I have no idea why I thought negatively hmm. about it. So anyway, I'm, I, I, I went down and I started doing some brainstorming with myself. You know okay. what brainstorming is, right? Yes. <laughs> you, you pick things, out, you just say things without judgment or without any kind of, you know, there's, there's no stipulations. You just throw things out. So I was just throwing ideas out to okay. myself as I was starting my research. And I said, go back to what was working well, replacing the shortcuts with the trial with the tried and true efforts as you found the shortcuts were breaking things down. Ha! Huh. So I'm like, oh, I've done that before. I said, I remember running track in my <laughs> I remember running track. I think I told you this story before. I, I ran track and I thought I was all all of that and I wasn't. I thought oh. I was all that in a bag of <laughs> bag of donuts. <laughs> and I wasn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and my coach said, Hey, look, you have potential. However, we need to develop you this way. So you need to train this way and do this and do this. And I said, No, nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and and the first one of the first races that I ran, I took dead last. Whoa. And it was a hundred meter, it was a hundred meter dash, hundred hundred meter, yeah, hundred meter run. Um, and we were in a stadium and my coach was just laughing so loudly. It was bellowing and, oh. and reverberating throughout the stands. And it was almost like this hush came over the crowd and they looked to see who was making all this boisterous noise. And it was my coach laughing at me coming in dead last. Oh. <laughs> so what I did was I replaced my training regimen and my running techniques with what my coach suggested I do. <laughs> okay. And I never lost again. I didn't win all of them, but I won more than not. But I certainly, <laughs> <laughs> I certainly used the word replace and said, okay, coach, I'm listening to you. You are smarter than me in what I need to be doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm listening to you. So that was that was kind of one one of the brainstorming things that just popped into my head. Okay, now in the computer world, everybody knows what the product 1.0 does, and not many people want 1.0. They want 2.0 or 3.15. <laughs> they, right. they want an updated thing. So you know, I thought since I'm brainstorming, replacing replacing the the newer technique, the the newer um, getting all the bugs out of the way and, and those mm -hmm. fixes and things. I also said replace a refrigerator, washer or dryer, much like you suggest as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then I thought, oh, here's one that I haven't used in a long time. Replacing a B on my last report card with an mm -hmm. A on the, mm -hmm. on the next one. Ha uh, ha, yes. Um, how about this in landscaping? Replacing your yard your your green grass, your lawn, and your flowers with zero scape um, landscaping scheme. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in in Arizona and Texas yeah. are doing that. Yes, right, right. And here's now here's one that I said in your definition and mine as well because I had it to put something back where it was before. I never. Anyway, here's what I, here's what I thought. Every Christmas, I construct a Christmas village. Okay. Yes, you do. I do, yes, and it's very fun. I have very much fun doing that. And in one of our rooms, I remove or I replace all the furniture that's in there with tables and cottages and trains for the Christmas village. And then when the season is over, I replace the furniture back in their original places in the room and replace the Christmas village parts and pieces back in our storage closet. Uh -huh. it, it never really occurred to me, and this is true, it never occurred to me that moving furniture and cottages back to their original places was a form of the verb replace. Well, I, I really like how you turned this around from a negative to a uh, uh, neutral and then a positive. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And and then I said, oh, OK, since I was on a roll, I thought, huh, well, how about if I'm at work? What are some of the positive things that we can do with the verb replace? Mm -hmm. And I immediately thought of something that I tend to speak about succession planning. Ah, you know, ah right. 
succession planning, replacing someone to, or, or having someone get ready to fill the role that you or someone else is going to leave. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought that's replacing and hopefully it's for the better. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. But no, you but, are irreplaceable. Oh, no, 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 no. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> and then I thought of trial and error because a lot of times individuals or groups, they just kind of do things over and over and over until they get it right. Mm -hmm. How about replacing trial and error with proper training? Ah, okay. So it, 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 we get through that all of that inefficiency much more quickly and we get into a into a regimen or if you will a ritual of oh doing it this way and all of a sudden things fall into place and you go wow why didn't we do this before <laughs> <laughs> and, and i remember in the hospital when i was a surgical technician we used to do what we, what we called in services and an in service was when one of us or a doc or a nurse would find a new technique to do mm -hmm. things or you, new tech, new um, equipment to use uh, in place of what we're doing with surgery and saying, oh, we need to teach everyone else in, in our little group here the same kinds of things and skills so we can all use, utilize this new equipment. And much like, you know, nowadays, gosh, surgery, they do, there's a lot of robots if you, if you know robots. Artificial intelligence, right? Artificial intelligence, but yes, and, and robots are being used to do surgery now where um, we, we didn't have that. 15, 20 years ago when one was doing surgery. <laughs> mm, right. So, so anyway, those are, so, those are kind of some of the positive things. And I know you have some quotes for us. I just, I can I bet. I do. I do I, have three quotes. Good. Uh, first one is Charlie Brown. The oh. That's the secret to life. Replace one worry with another. Ah. <laughs> so, that's, that's not necessarily going in the positive direction, but... Uh, and this is Johann Schiller, who said, "We can never, we can never replace a friend. When a man is fortunate uh, fortunate enough to have several, he finds they are all different. No one has a double in friendship." Excellent. Yeah, that and is then, really, really profound. Yeah, I loved that one. And then Rita Merrow said, "There will always be someone to take your place, but no one can replace you." Yes. Yes. And much like the, again, reaching back into verbs that we have used before, mm -hmm. but and I think this was on impact of sorts, but remember I told you I was walking through our neighborhood and our next door neighbor and her friends, they were 12 or 13 when they did this, they had posted these little post-it notes in many places where, like on a stop sign, and, you, and you're walking, you re read the little post-it note, and I remember this one said, be yourself because everybody else is taken. Oh, <laughs> sweet. So you can't replace yourself, you know, golly, right. or you can't replace someone else. Just be yourself because everyone else is taken. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was being myself one day at the office and I went into the women's room and I put little yellow stickies of encouragement on the back of the bathroom doors. Uh -huh. And uh, And the feedback I got from that was, someone's watching in there. It's very creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, well, that's not the part of myself I want to, you know, encourage. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I followed your your um, line of proficiency here, and okay. I found an article. Excellent. And it is about it's about replacing a word with another word that I've heard a couple a few years ago from a friend of mine. I can't remember what she said it was called but i found this article so i will i will credit michelle mooney here in the article who's a therapist in seattle and she says avoid but in communication use and instead mm -hmm. and i remember that my friend was she she had this thing this this um platform moving of of changing but to and 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 here's some reasons why the therapist uh, michelle mooney says but statements in communication are risky. And it says, why should you avoid using but? Because it can come off to someone as attacking and immediately put them on mm -hmm. the defensive. True. And it says, she says, 
using the word and versus but is one of the mo most effective tools that she uses with her clients. It can really help change the way we think about ourselves and how we communicate with others. And I thought, yeah, wow, okay, cool. And so at work, you know, I've heard this many times, I'm sure many of our listeners have as well. Your boss says, you did a great job on that project, but. So when mm -hmm. you hear the word, but all of that, you did a great job on that project just went away. And I'm you're right. And right. now you're ready for, okay, what's the, but <laughs> yeah, she and says, yes. I'm sorry. She no, says, no, no. if you say you did a great job on that project and, oh, okay. That softened the blow. I'm looking for more now. And I'm waiting for what that and is. We could do better or we can do it quick. What is that and? And I don't have to throw away everything that she just said. So all of the attaboys are still there. And yeah. I'm waiting for the next thing, which I found was pretty cool. I, I'm I sorry, like you were going to say something. No, I really like that. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, okay. I was going to say, but if you're using that tool, be cautious that you don't spend one third of the time saying good job and two thirds of the time saying and. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah, that might that might jump in there and say, oh, oh I think there's a but. In that there end somewhere. sounds an awful lot like another three lettered word. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. And, and, and in, in her article, she gave us 13, 13 ways to stop using but in communication. And I'll offer some of those as, as we go a little bit further. And I'm okay. looking at the clock is 21. 18 already. Oh my goodness. Flying wow. by. What else would you like to tell us here? Well, I want to hear more of what uh, Ms. Mooney said along those lines, but let me just throw a few things out here uh, that I also found uh, that are uh, the positive side of replace. Okay. Or maybe they're not. Oh uh -huh. no, there's the Kronos syndrome, which is the fear of being replaced. And in say in the work context, it's the fear on a boss's side that one of their uh, uh, up and coming vice presidents is going to want to replace them. Um, also known as being afraid of losing all that you have achieved. So there's, there's a, <laughs> that yes. isn't a positive side, Kronos syndrome. And if you know all about your, uh, Greek mythology, Kronos defeated his father and took his place and then was always his fray, afraid his sons would do the same to him. So he ate them. So <laughs> yeah, not necessarily the okay. best news there. Huh. So, um, and then there's something called the Replace Action Package, which is um, sponsored by World Health Organization, which is a strategic approach to eliminating industrial produced trans fat from national food supplies with the goal of elimination by 2023. What made me sad about that is all the pictures they had of foods that were using trans fats were foods that I really do enjoy. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was kind of a sad thing. So let me hear more about and versus but. Oh, okay. All right. So she says, again, 13 ways to stop using but in communications. And she gave three different groups, um, couples, parents, and job. And so okay. what she said with couples was, and she says, this is a good way to let someone down. However, not to really impinge upon their friendship. She says, I had a great time and I would prefer uh, to just be friends. So that kind of lessens the hurt feelings. And maybe the other individual would say, okay, sure. We could just be friends as opposed to, okay, I'm just going to sulk and crawl into a little hole and I'm going to avoid you for the rest of the year. <laughs> kind of, right. kind of way. Yeah. She says, I see that you are upset and I need to honor my feelings too. Mm. So I, I think that's kind of cool because it says that it's not just about me. It's about both of us. Yeah. 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 I like that. I feel hurt by what you did, and it would be helpful next time if you could say that differently. <laughs> ah, yes. uh, that that would be much better received than other ways you could say it. I, I think so. And, and and you know what? As I as I see all of this stuff in the news about road rage and oh, all of gosh. all of the escalations and whatnot, yes. I think a statement like that could. De could help de-escalate the situation. Yes, yes. 
you know. So uh, again, a positive coming out from replacing, but with and. Yes. Uh, okay, I'll move to to some of the parents' things. She says, "I know you're tired, and you still need to clean up your room." <laughs> 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 so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, I know you really want that new toy and we will look at it again near your birthday. Ah. So we're not saying, okay, nope, can't get it. We are saying, however, let's wait till your birthday nears and we will re-engage here. There you and go. I'm, I have a lot of things left to say, but I'm going to leave them because you and I have trivia questions that we've got to get out. It's oh. 2511 wow. already. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. So what's your trivia question? So my qu question, just to repeat, was uh, when yes. you replace when replacing a worker, what percentage of their salary do you have to spend? So, so what percentage of worker salary do you spend generally to replace that person? Uh, so did you want to guess? I, I was thinking it's... It, I was thinking maybe 150%. Wow. Um, maybe if you're talking on the CEO level. But if you're talking about your everyday average worker, 20%. 20%. Okay. Yeah. All right. A and you're right. I was talking about CEOs because yeah. yep. those individuals, it takes more people to get the, the committees together. You're spending right. time researching yep. those kinds of things. Yes. yes. And, and and so, yes. So it's it's pretty pretty expensive to do that. But 20%. Um, that's, uh, that's, wow. Much, well, much and now I'm wanting to know how I define an everyday average worker. <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> and I got 2619, so I'm going to give okay. you my yes. trivia question. When, or what has replaced some of the many common items that we all use on a daily basis? And what's your answer? Cell phone. Aha, you're exactly right. Ding, 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 ding. You win Yay. the prize. Because <laughs> it has replaced a watch, an alarm clock, a camera, a flashlight, a calendar, a steno pad, a calculator, yep. and a timer, just to name a few. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Golly. And I'm it's it's 2650, so Sheila, I'm okay. gonna leave it to you, my friend. Well, first of all, love how you were turning around a word that originally had negative connotations into something positive. Thank you. And so thank you for that. And thank you for those who listened. If you want to um, hear about how often to replace your smoke alarm, you'll just have to listen another time. <laughs> <laughs> but we appreciate you and uh, hope you have a great week. And we appreciate you one verb at a time, too. <laughs> yes. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.